Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this optic that you see in my hands right here and that you saw on my Bravo Company Recce rifle throughout the intro. This is the Steiner. This is their uh, fixed four power S432 scope and uh, comes in a couple different reticles. This one here is kind of a weird reticle. We'll get to that here in a second. Um, but it's a prism scope. So what does that mean? For folks that don't know, prism scopes are fixed magnification. Generally speaking, there's a couple exceptions to that, but 99% of them on the market are going to be a fixed magnification, which this one certainly is. It's a fixed four power, um, which is going to bring up some comparisons that we'll get to a little bit later on in the video. They're generally speaking, very rugged, very durable. Um, for the money, they tend to have better glass than variable power optics uh, in the same price range. Uh, this That's true for this one as well. And they tend to have etch reticles. So generally speaking, there's not any moving parts. Things simply aren't going to go wrong like you could see when you have erector sets moving back and forth like a lot of scopes have. That said, a lot of scopes don't ever have problems. But if you're trying to have the all-out uh, bomb-proof durability, uh, definitely prism scopes are on the higher end of the scale there. And uh, the Steiner here is in that category, in my opinion. This one, like I said, fixed four power. And what you'll notice about it when you look at it is that it's pretty big, right? So it's also pretty heavy. So this one here comes in right at 25 ounces. That's with the mount. So compared to some of the other competitive offerings out there, it's it's heavier, right? And generally speaking, on a rifle, that's not a good thing unless we're talking bench rest shooting. Um, but this is probably not a ideal uh, bench rest optic. But what you get versus those other competitive offerings for the weight is you get really good eye relief for a fixed four power prism. It's over three inches. I think it's between three and three and a half inches. But unlike some of the other competitors, you don't have to have it right up in your eye to get a good sight picture. Um, you get a diopter, which is huge, right? So uh, for those of you guys that watch my primary arm Cyclops video, it's a 1X prism scope. And one of the things I really like about that, and that a lot of people out there really like about it, is that it has a focusable diopter. So what this does back here is it allows you to set the reticle so that it's clear to your eye. Whatever your vision setting may be, um, you can set it so that way it's good to go for you as you see. Um, a lot of prisms don't have that, and it's definitely an advantage for a lot of folks with not the best eyesight out there. Um, you also get a pretty darn big field of view. So um, compare again, we'll compare it to an ACOG here a little bit later on because I know it's going to come up, so we'll just do that later. Um, but field of view is very good as well, and the eye box is good as well. So you have eye relief and then eye box. So if you're shooting from um, non-traditional shooting positions and you're not directly behind a scope, um, can you still actually see through it? Yes. Uh, with this one, you get a lot more relief than you would with a lot of competitive options out there. So um, the glass in there is shot glass. It's made in Germany. So that's some of the highest quality glass out there um, that people are familiar with. The uh, same as the ACOG. Again, try not to go down the rabbit hole of the ACOG already. Uh, it does have a proprietary mount, so and it's not QD. So if you're looking for aftermarket mounts, unless these become really popular and aftermarket companies start making them, you're kind of going to be stuck with this one. However, it seems like a high quality mount. It does have a spacer that you can remove if you want to get it higher or lower. Of course, this one here basically brings it right up to AR-15 comfort height. We have these m -lock rails all the way around here and uh, they are removable. So honestly, I would remove them uh, all but one if I was going to run this sort of as like a primary optic. And you guys can see there, they're at the in-between positions. So in between three, six, nine o'clock position um, and 12 o'clock position rather. And what that allows you to do is a couple things. It does come with a uh, flip cap, uh, which is clear, which is nice. And uh, it is quick detach. Not sure what that's worth, but it is there. You can mount it really wherever you want on there, or you can just completely remove it, which is honestly what I would probably do. But you can mount the 1913 rail or any other MLOC compatible accessory on there. And uh, kind of what I think I would do as a right-handed shooter is I would probably leave this one here this uh, MOX section, throw a 19 ra 13 rail or a like a Trigicon RMR mount on there and just take the rest of them off, save a little bit of weight. But that way you have that quick uh, sight acquisition if you want to just roll the rifle over in the 45 degree position and pick it up uh, nice and fast there. Um, I should note though that you can with a four power optic and ask any Marine out there and a lot of soldiers and they'll tell you um, four power optics you absolutely can shoot up close and personal. It's a concept called the bend and aiming concept where basically you superimpose the reticle on one eye and then your non shooting eye kind of brings them together. And if you do enough ready up drills, it absolutely does work. So there is that. 
Speaking of seeing the reticle, we'll talk about the one that's in this particular optic here. This one is the P7TR reticle. It is a BDC style reticle. However, it's probably not the best one for this optic in my opinion. It's good that they offer it, I suppose, but um, it's calibrated for a 22, 250 uh, round, so pretty high velocity round and I was shooting this just with M193 again out of my 16 inch rifle so I kind of had to play with it a little bit I ran the numbers here um, just zeroing it at 100 yards and then I also subsequently because those numbers that you guys are seeing here on your screen are a little bit wonky and kind of hard to remember what I did was I just zeroed it at 300 yards and the farthest I shot this out to was 550 yards so basically I was minute of man as long as I held center and we would always get an impact uh, using that technique. It's something that you guys can use with a lot of BDCs that aren't exactly right out there. If you zero them at three or 400 yards you're generally going to be pretty darn close with a lot of different similar velocity rounds but that's that's a video for another day uh, what we have here is again bdc style in the middle there is no auto ranging capability and then those wind holds on the side those are for five and ten mile an hour wind holds depending on uh where which side of the line so the inner part of the line is five the outer part of the line is ten you can double them for 20 you can half them for two and a half etc so that is how it works uh, the actual turrets on the optic itself each uh, click is going to be one centimeter at 100 meters it's Steiner, it's German, it's metric, it kind of is what it is. But for this kind of optic, in my opinion, it's fine. Would it be nice to see a quarter MOA? Sure. Um, but most folks aren't gonna really have an issue with that and most guns aren't much more accurate than that. So we do have an illumination setting over here on the left side of the optic. We have a couple night vision modes and then we go settings one through five in terms of illumination. Um, I'm gonna roll some photos in here. I probably may have already, but one thing I'll tell you is that uh, what you guys are looking at is uh, photos of lenses by lenses through a computer through a you know a memory card all of those sorts of things distorting it so you're not really seeing what I see with my human eye I'll tell you the glass on this is, is fantastic it's excellent uh, the reticle is absolutely daylight bright people always ask is it daylight bright I'm always like it's kind of relative with a lot of scopes but with this one it's daylight bright I uh, shot with it in the middle of the day and you can absolutely pick up the dot no problem um, however the rest of the reticle is not illuminated um, if that's an issue for you just know that it is just the center dot and i believe it's a 1.4 moa dot that is illuminated on there uh, for those of you guys who are in the military you'll know your first sergeant and your um, xo will really like that the turrets are actually tethered together there so if you need to tie it down you can do so of course we have all these fantastic m lock points to do so as well as I alluded to earlier, there is another reticle for it. That's the one I would recommend. It is essentially a BDC reticle for M855 um, out of a 16 inch gun. So if you actually look at it with most elevations, most humidities, levels, all those sorts of things, it's gonna line up pretty darn well and give you a BDC out to 700 meters. So um, that's the one I'd go with. However, this is what Steiner sent. I should mention that as well. Uh, Steiner did reach out to me and see if I wanted to review this optic. And I did because generally speaking, like I said, I like prism scopes so um yeah that's the reticle i would go with it has auto ranging features and you can also just of course get your real quick hold off although i do wish that reticle had actual markings and this one as well i wish it had markings for the meter lines um it's just faster i don't know why a lot of companies don't do it um you know if you know that you're 500 yards having to count one two three four five in your first shot it's just something that takes time and sometimes you don't have time as a shooter now for the part of the video that I'm sure most of you guys have been waiting for. So we're gonna compare it to the ACOG. I grabbed a TA-01 here just for illustration purposes, but I'm gonna talk about the TA-31 because that's the most popular ACOG for sure. Um, so the first thing you notice is just the size. I mentioned that earlier in the video, this thing is like 25 ounces, uh, a four power ACOG with the base which is not a lightweight mount, you can get lighter weight mounts for sure, is like 13 and a half ounces. So it's coming close to double the weight. And that's one of the things people really like about ACOGs is that they're really lightweight for what they are, with the exception of one or two models, uh, but the four power for sure. Um, another thing that people hate about ACOGs is the eye relief. So your fixed four power ACOG is generally speaking going to have about an inch and a half of eye relief. So um, sometimes on ARs, if you guys run your stock extended a little bit, you kind of got to move it back. Some folks are feel like they're forced to shoot nose to charging handle, those sorts of things. But uh, you don't have to do that with the Steiner. You have much more um, generous eye relief. But one of the things that uh, the way the ACOG rather 
gives you that eye relief is it's a trade-off for a larger field of view downrange. Now the field of view on the Steiner is also very good as well. So with the ACOG, you're talking about 36.8, 36.9 feet. And with the Steiner here, you're looking at 37.7 feet. So it still retains the very good field of view but does it with greater eye relief. The penalty, of course, is the weight and the size that we talked about. Both of these have shot glass. Um, your ACOGs, of course, are gonna have more mount options out there. That's kind of just a given. If you're talking about the ones that are fiber optic and tritium, the pros of that is that it's tritium and fiber optic, right? So during the day, you get nice, bright um, illumination on your reticle. However, the con of that is that sometimes it doesn't match the environment that you're shooting at. If you're shooting into a window from outside, um, Outside is generally speaking gonna be brighter with the exception of night, of course, uh, and vice versa. If you're shooting from inside, shooting outside, sometimes it's not as bright as you would like it to be. However, it's always there, right? So your fiber optic, even when there's no ambient light, you have your tritium to back it up, but the tritium is gonna last 12 to 15 years-ish. So pros and cons there. The pro of this one is that it takes a CR2032 battery and you can set the illumination as you see fit. Both of them have shot glass, like I mentioned, both of them have uh, etched reticles. So regardless, even if you don't have battery, even if you don't have fiber optic, even if your tritium's dead, you still have the ability to use that reticle and it's an etched reticle so you can use it in any lighting condition, no matter what. So as long as you have like a source of illumination, uh, so if you have a weapon light, let's say, um, and you hit that weapon light, that reticle will appear to you and you are able to use it at any time. So that is cool. It's kind of the bomb proof features um, that we talked about there with prism optics. Now there is a rating and shock absorption for this scope. I dropped it once just to see and uh, it, it, literally I don't even think it has a scuff. I dropped it straight on the top and it doesn't. Oh no, there it is. Okay, never mind. It does have a scuff. <laughs> I dropped it, but it was fine. And uh, I'm sure it's tested to much greater standards than me dropping a rifle at shoulder height. Um, but in terms of durability, it is waterproof down to, I believe, 30 meters. ACOG is going to be a little bit deeper in that regard. Made in Germany, made in America. I think that pretty much covers most of the uh, comparison between the two. I think we've covered most of the salient points on the optic with one exception, and that's going to be cost. Um, MSRP on this is right around $1,300. However, looking around street price today, I was able to see it uh, retail under $1,000. Now that's very expensive, and I guess we'll bring this guy back into the equation uh, for you. Um, it's an ACOG pricing for sure. Um, it's very similarly priced. You know, sometimes you can get ACOGs a little bit cheaper than that. Sometimes they're more expensive than that. Etc. Um, so it's going head to head price wise uh, with the ACOG, which is, in my opinion, uh, it's a it's a tough fight. I love the ACOGs. You guys know that they're excellent optics, and uh, going head to head with that, it's tough. Now, I think who would want to go with this over an ACOG? Somebody who has. Uh, vision problems who with an ACOG reticle, they don't exactly see it as crisp as it actually looks to people with, you know, normal, healthy, well-functioning eyes. That diopter uh, capability is something that I think a lot of folks are going to like. Uh, some of the ACOGs work really well with night vision optics. Some of them don't, just depending on the model, this will work well with all of them. Um, additionally, people who are, get frustrated with the lack of eye relief on some of the four power ACOGs, this is going to give you a better solution there. Uh, folks who aren't sensitive about weight, um, maybe something to look at. In terms of glass quality, I always talk about ACOG glass quality because it's excellent. Um, this one is right on par with it, absolutely. So that, that's a big compliment for me uh, to this Steiner Optic. So um, again, a little bit less mounting options out there, but all in all, it's been a good optic. Again, I'd probably go with a different reticle personally. That's me. Um, some folks might like the reticle that's in there. That's just fine, but it's given us no issues. Um, the turrets seem to track well. They're capped, which I like as well. Um, battery life is not bad. I don't know that off the top of my head. If I can find it, I will roll that in, but I've left it on for over a week and it's been fine. Not that that's a lot of battery life, but if you guys know, uh, powering scopes is different than powering uh, red dots. So um, if you're like hunting or something like that, you should get plenty of hunts out of one battery without issue there. Um, I think that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about the optic that we didn't cover here, by all means, post them down below in the comment section. But if you actually need an answer to those questions, uh, the best place to reach me is over at my Facebook page here that you guys see on the bottom of the screen. Um, I answer all the messages that I get over there. I don't always see the comments questions that I get on YouTube, just the way the algorithm displays them these days for creators. It is what it is. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. If you're new to the channel and you like this type of video, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're subscribed and you're not seeing 
at least two to three, maybe four videos a week here on the main channel, uh, make sure you hit the notification bell. If you've done both of those and you're still not seeing them, recommend you sign up for my email list. If you want to see my content, I send out like one email a week with all the videos of the week and a few deals that we find along the way. And that way there's no gigantic social media monster in between the two of us and you guys will actually get the notifications. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Truly appreciate it. I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.